Hey Jack, I'm back, and with me, another speed art. And this one is of old Snoky Boy from The Last Jedi. Now you're probably wondering, why are you ranking the Star Wars movies again? Because you already did that. Well, this time I'm going to rank the Star Wars sequels and the spin-offs all on their own, because, well, the final sequel came out and at last is on streaming. The Rise of Skywalker capped off a 43-year saga, but how does it rank against the other Disney movies? Let's go through them from worst to first to find out. And coming in at number 5 is going to be Solo A Star Wars Story. While I had fun watching this in theaters, the bland look of the film is the biggest deterrent and it just felt a little too checklisty. like they said, okay, let's take everything Han ever said and let's make sure to include it in some way. And then you add in things like the Imperial officer giving him his name because he's all alone and Alden Ehrenreich's performance, which while it has the swagger of Han, it just lacks the gravelly voice and Harrison Ford mannerisms that only he can really pull off. And you get a film that is fun, but it just doesn't feel quite right. Okay, so I've changed my ranking a little bit since last time, now that the whole final trilogy is out. It's sort of changed my perspective on some of the films, and the one that suffers the most and feels the most out of place is The Last Jedi. I really like the Force connection stuff between Rey and Kylo, and when Luke finally starts training Rey, things get a lot more fun, but all the casino stuff and scenes with Rose and Finn feel just a little out of place, and the slow chase scene in space is just a little too lifeless for the Star Wars fan in me, and the backstory they give to Luke felt just like a completely different person. Although I do think this is Mark Hamill's best performance as far as acting in the Star Wars series, so while it's not a complete waste, I do think this one stands out the most, and since JJ came out for the last film, this one really feels out of place because it just wasn't directed by him, it's that directed by Ryan Johnson, so The Last Jedi is coming in at 4th place. And right dab in the middle is going to be The Rise of Skywalker. And let me tell you, this film is a roller coaster. It feels like a speed run through a video game. And because I have the attention span of a B, this movie kept me entertained. There was always something happening. The main characters feel like they actually have more of a relationship between one another. Now, unfortunately, with a film that throws so much at the wall, not everything is going to stick. And because the last film didn't really set up a big bad for the final film, they sort of had to rush the Emperor into the opening crawl. But I loved seeing Ian McDermott come back in the role, and every time he was on screen was a real treat. Unfortunately, it sort of undermines Episode 6 and Vader's arc a bit. Another problem I have is Mark Hamill's acting and the wig I think he was wearing. Uh, it just looked awful, and his acting was just pretty stiff and a little bit bland. Uh, it just kind of feels like he's a little bit burnt out on the franchise. Although I think the good outweighs the bad overall, and I have quite a bit of fun watching this film. I think I saw it three times in theaters, so obviously I'm a fan of it, but it has its issues. <laughs> and coming in at number two is going to be The Force Awakens. Now this film set up quite a bit that got a lot of people, including myself, excited again for Star Wars. Kylo was a great character, a bit of an edgelord living in the shadow of Vader. Rey was a lot of fun and it's hard to dislike her. She's an orphan and wants to know who her parents are, and she's discovering new powers along the way. Finn is also at his best here, a stormtrooper deflecting from the First Order. There's a lot to go with here, and Snoke is a great creepy presence in this film. Harris Moore also gives a touching performance and probably steals the show. Not to mention the teaser ending with Luke got me super excited for the next two films. Now what drags this down a spot from my original ranking is that it just uh, kind of is apparently just all set up. Uh, they didn't really have anything planned, and the next two films didn't really build on anything, at least in a meaningful way I feel, although I did enjoy Kylo's arc through it, but when you don't plan out a trilogy, it kind of brings down the first movie quite a bit. And the best film in the Disney era of movies, and moving up actually two spots from my original ranking, is going to be Rogue One. Now, I originally complained that the Vader hallway scene felt a little bit out of place, especially compared to A New Hope, but that's really the most jarring aspect here. The movie itself moves at a quick pace and introduces a lot of characters, some of which I like a lot, including Galen Erso, K2SSO, and Krennic, and they're all a delight to see on screen. Some of the others are a little bland. Unfortunately, Jin Erso and Cassian and Andor are the most bland, and then the main characters here, and that kind of hurts the film. But with that said, the scale and epic look of the battles more than make up for those flaws. The final fight is pretty goddamn exciting. Even though I already knew where the movie was more or less going to end up, uh, it just helps that this is a story movie. It isn't weighed down by two weaker sequels. It's a one and done, and it's probably the easiest one to watch because of it, and best one to watch of the new Disney batch of movies, which is five movies released in the span of like four years. It's pretty crazy that Disney was able to put all that out. It's a dream to be a Star Wars fan in that time period. Of course, now things are slowing down a little bit. There's been some backlash. So, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. So that is my ranking of the Disney era Star Wars movies. Feel free to leave your own ranking below. And if you haven't seen it, I have a new animation on my main channel going through Emperor Palpatine's surprising evolution. I saw a lot of comments from people when I put up the uh, tiny hint graphic 
when I try to get people to guess, you know, what the next movie or uh, character is going to be that I'm covering. And people who were guessing Palpatine were like, oh, I can tell by the lightning coming from two strokes is Palpatine. A lot of people thought it was Thor. But even the people who say it was Palpatine would get replies being like, I can't be Palpatine. He's only in like two movies. Guys, if you haven't seen the video, watch it. He's in like, well, he's in like six movies. Plus, you got to include Snoke a little bit in there because he's kind of like his uh, either conduit or a puppet form or something. I don't know. It's not really explained that well. But you can go check it out on the channel. It's probably linked below. And also in it, we partnered with In Search of Tomorrow, which is going to go through the best sci-fi films of the 1980s through an epic four-hour long documentary. I'm going to leave a link for it down below. If you use that link, it will help to directly support me, this channel, and the main channel, so I'll be able to keep making animations. And you'll be able to reserve your copy of In Search of Tomorrow for yourself. And do it by May 17th, before their Kickstarter ends. So until next time, have a good day, and keep on keeping on.